Hi, welcome to the podcast, which is all about levels of service. So this is brought to you um, by the Port Macquarie Hastings Screening Against Rate Payer Exploitation. I'm the president, Stephen Gates, and it's all in the podcast series, Port Macquarie Hastings Council, Incompetent, Corrupt, or Just Don't Care. So this will look at uh, services. Now, services are fundamental to council. In fact, it's the only reason council exists. And that is to manage assets, to charge you rates or a levy, and in return, the provision of services to you. Under the Act, those services need to be fair, equitable, they can't be biased from one person to the other. Um, what we'll show you, and you'll be furious, is that council has deliberately not engaged in consultation with ratepayers to come up with what's known as an agreed level of service since nine, sorry, since 2009. So that's almost 12 years that they haven't done this. And you've got to ask the question, why? So let's begin by looking at the question as to what is a service? So I've just brought up on your screen uh, 20 service categories. And these are really broad. So, for example, the airport, um, crematoriums, glasshouse, roads, sport and recreation. We then break down those 20 major service categories into subcategories, and I'll put up on your screen a list of what some of those examples of subcategories are, and this is just in an Excel spreadsheet. So, for example, if we looked at uh, roads as a major service category, then we have sub-service categories, such as sealed roads, unsealed roads, vegetation. Then we have a sub-service within each of those. For example, sealed roads is broken down into resealing, shoulder grading, drains, signs and furniture, and so on. And then we'll have a minimum level of service, which is attributed to that. And what's critically important when we start talking about services is intervention standard. Now, an intervention standard is what the minimum level of service is designed to prevent. So, for example, we took maintenance grading the intervention standard is designed to uh, stop having corrugations greater than 20 millimetres in height, or it's designed to have potholes less than 50 millimetres in height. What you're trying to do through your periodic maintenance program is to achieve your minimum standards for intervention. So we don't want potholes, we want 50 mil. And the reason we don't want that is we want to try and reduce the reactive service which comes through, which is a far more expensive thing to do. So if you can keep everything within your periodic maintenance programs and not reactive maintenance programs, you give a better level of service to the community and you decrease your costs. So one of the questions is, as a rate payer, you want service levels to be clear, you want them to be transparent, and you want to hold council accountable. In fact, you want to see them report against their achievement of the service levels. For example, the amount of roads being resealed each year, the amount of gravel sheeting which is being done, or on ad hoc repairs, their performance time, and how many are left outstanding. And a competent council, one that cares about its rate payers, will do that. It will publish its programs. It will publish um, its performance standards. And in its quarterly reports, um, under its operational plan, it will give you its achievement against those. So you can clearly see as a rate payer. If you have an incompetent council, one that doesn't want to be held accountable, then it won't publish any level of service. It, because simply it won't want to be held accountable. So... What of Port Macquarie Hastings Council? Well, what we know is that in 2009, Council was required to sit down with ratepayers and to agree a level of service. Now, senior management deliberately didn't do this. And in fact, they haven't done it since 2009. And you have to ask the question, why? So if you have to ask the question why they haven't published an agreed level of service, it's because they don't want to be held accountable. I know they've failed. So, for example, we looked at the podcast where we talked about sealed roads. We showed that 
the resealing of roads wasn't being done at all in 2009. We showed that in the following year, 2010-11, they did 1.79%, not the 10% they required to do. We also know from the podcast on unsealed roads that the maintenance grading has been cut back as a level of service with the introduction of 40 full drive access tracks. We also know that gravel resheating has been cut back from the special rate variation funded one in 10 years now to one in 115 years. We also know that they didn't do the one in 10 year gravel resheating. So if you don't know this and it's not published, then council can't be held accountable. And that's in fact what senior management want. They don't want to be held accountable. Now, this council, since about 2017, has engaged in a really deliberate strategy to um, make any reporting ambiguous and generic. Now, previous to that, you used to be able to see exactly how many roads were resealed in kilometres, and they would report against it. All that stopped. And what we get is this generic set of words, and I've just put up on your screen an extract from the quarterly progress reports, so you can see. So on this one, they have a success measure, um, which is in accordance with adopted programs and reactive maintenance based on risk. Pretty ambiguous to determine if you've achieved success or not. Their target 100%, and year-to-date actual, they say they've done 100%. The comment on progress, on target, works delivered on budget, work scheduled based on inspections and assessment criteria for council's roads, road risk rating and road hierarchy systems. Absolutely meaningless. You cannot make an assessment where they did achieve the success or not achieve the success or what it means if they didn't. And this is what they do. They want to report things in a way that you cannot criticise them because you have no evidence to criticise them. Now, if they were responsible, then they would publish everything which gave you a level of service or what they intended to do, and then you could hold them accountable. For example, they have a, a, a program for resealing. Don't publish it, cannot get it. They have a program for roadside shoulder grading, not published at all. One for street sweeping, not published. Gravel resheating, not published. Roadside vegetation slashing and outreach mowing, not published. Bridges, wharves, jetty, boat ramps, not published. They have one for mowing programs, not published. They have one for sports fields maintenance and, and programs, not published. And that's what this council does. It won't give you anything to hold them to account, and that's a fundamental problem. So let's look at what council was required to do and what they did. So we know that they're required to sit down from 2009 account with an agreed level of service. They didn't do it, but they did do a project to specify what the level of service was. And this was done between 2014 and 16. And they came up with what they know as an adopted level of service. Now adopted simply means that the level of service they were providing at the time is what they treat as being the level of service. Now that's a bit of a fabrication because what we've seen through other podcasts is your service level has been decreasing. So we had an original service level, it then decreases, and then council looks in and says, well, this is the adopted level of service, therefore that's what you're getting. Um, and they then use that as the benchmark. Now, that's just a bit false and misleading. There's a reason why they haven't consulted. You'll also remember from the podcast on special rate variations that they did hold a focus group, your, community, your voice, our community. And you recall they were presented with information on unsealed roads. And what we showed you in that was that the information which was presented was fundamentally wrong. So how can you have consultation where you're telling people this is the level of service and then ask them to say, do you want it better or worse? when the fundamental information they're relying upon is completely flawed. And the example was, we're grading 69 roads every six months. It's a fabrication. They were doing 17 in that year. Also that we're grading over 795 kilometers of road. Complete fabrication. They never graded 795 kilometers. I think in that year it was around the 500 kilometer mark. Fundamentally wrong. So 
The Office of Local Government became so concerned that councils weren't consulting uh, with the community, come up with an agreed level of service, that they made it as a requirement to report in the financial accounts. Now, I've just brought up on your screen a table. This is from the financial accounts of council in Special Schedule 7. And you'll see that there is, um, in the fourth column across, titled Estimated Cost to Bring Assets to the Agreed Level of Service Set by Council. Now, this is the community agreed level of service, and you'll notice how it's blank. So what our council does is it deliberately doesn't do it and then doesn't report it in the financial accounts, even though it's been a requirement since 2009. So what have we had as a level of service? Well, we've exposed it all in podcasts. It's been reducing since 2000. What we have is a poo brown level of service at a gold-plated cost. And who's to blame for this? Well, there's absolutely no question. It's paid council staff. And you have to say, what has the elected council done since 2009? We had the services review project, 2014 to 16. Nothing ever arose out of that. The only time there's ever been any consultation is when council wanted a special rate variation. Then they had to show they consulted with the community. And we've all seen that they present information to get the answer that they want to justify a special rate variation increase. But the level of service has always, has always decreased. Um, so you should be furious. There's been a, this culture of indifference in council and neglect, and it's supported by this whole fabric of deception, failure to publish documents, and then subsequently cover up. This is a council that does what it wants to do when it wants to do it, and to hell with service to ratepayers. You should be furious. You should demand change. And the question is from this, do you believe that Port Macquarie, Port Macquarie Hastings Council is incompetent, corrupt, or they just don't care?